Welcome to the Behind the Lens series, where we look to find the right documentary zoom for your creative intent. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Fuji MK18-55. This is a new release from Fuji, and it's designed exclusively in Sony E-mount, so it'll work with cameras like the Sony FS7, FS5, and A7S. It's a compact and lightweight zoom weighing just over two pounds, and it has a consistent T2.9 aperture through the entire zoom range. What I really like about working with this lens is I find that the zoom range is perfect for handheld verite work because it creates an intimacy and closeness with your characters. And if you're looking for something a little bit longer, Fuji announced a companion lens to this, which is the 50 to 135 T2.9, and that'll be out later this year. I really enjoyed working with this lens. I found that even though it's lightweight, it's extremely well built, and the design of it makes for easy operation. The spacing between the focus, zoom, and iris rings is perfect for one-handed operation when I'm handheld. So we took the 18-55, we put it on a Sony FS7, and we shot a resolution chart with it. By shooting the resolution chart, we're able to take a look at edge brightness, or to see if there's any vignetting with the lens. And when we shot it at wide open at T2.9, there's definitely some vignetting. That vignetting's still there, but gets a little better at T4. And then by 5.6, that vignetting goes away, and it remains consistent that way through the rest of the aperture range. We tested the sharpness of the lens by shooting the resolution chart wide open at T2.9, and then all the way through to T11. And what we found is that at wide open at T2.9, it's a really sharp lens. But once it hits T4 and above, it's incredibly sharp. I really like the way that this lens renders color. Uh, it's pretty neutral. It shifts a little bit towards yellow, but it does render skin tones beautifully. And it's also a little lower in contrast. And so this can be really useful if you're shooting in a high contrast situation and want to just smooth out the image a little bit. We tested the lens for breathing. So take a look at this shot with the columns on the right side of the frame. If you notice, as I roll through the focus from foreground to background, there's almost no scaling or zooming that happens to the picture. The lack of breathing is really important if you want to reduce those distractions, especially if you have long focus racks. The minimum focus of the lens is 2.8 feet, but there's also a macro setting that you can engage by clicking in the macro tab that's located by the lens mount. And what this does is drops the minimum focus down to 1.25 feet. So if you consider the length of the lens, it actually puts that minimum focus just a few inches in front of the front element. So this will give you really interesting creative shots. Something a lot of people are interested in when looking at lens tests is how does it render bokeh, or the out of focus elements of a shot? When we take a look at these out of focus cafe lights behind the dancers, we can see that the bulbs are really smooth and round. And this comes from the fact that there's nine iris blades in the lens. And so the more iris blades you have, then the softer and rounder those out of focus elements will become. The last thing I want to talk about is lens flares. And this lens is pretty flare resistant. The coating on the lens really helps minimize those flares when you're shooting. This can be really useful when you're shooting documentaries, because oftentimes we don't have the ability to control bright light sources that are in the frame, whether it's the sun or otherwise. And so this lens does a really good job at minimizing those flares to just give you a nice, clean image. I really enjoyed testing the Fuji MK18-55. To me, this zoom range is perfect for verite work. It's also a great companion lens if you're shooting with the Cabrio 20 to 120 or 19 to 90, and we'll take a look at those in other videos. It's a really lightweight lens, so I feel like I can shoot with it all day. I also like the way the lens renders color. It's neutral and lower in contrast, but it's an incredibly sharp lens as well. I found the lack of breathing really impressive, and the minimal lens flares are incredibly helpful if you want a nice clean image. So if you want some more information about this lens, be sure to check out the companion blog post, because in that we dive a lot deeper into all of these aspects that we tested. Thanks so much for watching the Behind the Lens series, and be sure to check out the rest of the videos. Thanks so much.